And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Ryan Metzler. Hey everyone, Ryan Metzler here, and today we're going to be taking a look at a Rio Grande game. We're going to be taking a look at Pantheon, which is a kind of area control game for two to four players that plays in about uh, 60 to 90 minutes. And this is going to be a game about moving around the land, uh, influencing areas by, you know, walking around, taking some columns and putting them onto the board, and you're going to score points for, uh, for favoring the gods or earning the favor of the gods, and for establishing your influence throughout the land. Uh, so it's really hard to describe other than that, so why don't we just take a look at how the game plays uh, and what's inside this box, and then you can kind of get your ideas, and I'll give you my opinion on it afterwards. So here you see everything included inside of Pantheon. And as I said, this is a game where you're going to be trying to get influence around the board by getting onto these column spaces, and you're also trying to get points by favoring or getting the favor of gods. Now each player is going to have several pieces. They'll have their starting pieces or their pieces for scoring. Uh, and then you're going to start the game with columns, which look like this. They're just little pillars. And feet, uh, which look like this. And these are going to be for different things. Feet are just going to be generally for moving around the board. And you're going to be starting from one position and trying to expand, getting to these columns, and getting some special pieces. And columns are going to be for placing on these column spots, which you'll have to expand to using your feet in order to get points at certain scoring rounds. The game is going to take place over six turns, and there's going to be scoring phases after turn three, and at the end of the game, after turn six. At the beginning of each turn, you're going to flip over a civilization card. There's a deck of cards that are going to be shuffled, and you're going to flip one of these over. And you're going to have a civilization that's going to be the civilization for the turn. And so this is going to be the Ga Galia civilization. And you're going to find the appropriate token over here, and you're going to put that onto the first turn so you know which civilization it is. So we find the Galia token, and we put it on turn one. After you've done this, you're actually going to have a special little bonus that happens with Galia. So right now, each player can either take two cards, or they can get a god, uh, but they have to flip the god and then pay for it, and if they can't pay for it, they don't get it. And this is going to happen for each civilization. After you've done that, you're going to set up the board, and you're going to take the civilization, or the little temple, and you're going to put it on the civilization starting spot. So Galia is here. And you're also going to draw some hexes from this bag. So in a two-player game, you're going to draw hexes for three different spots, but for more players, you would draw more hexes. And let's say I draw these out, and I'm going to place them on the board to the spots that match this civilization. So there's one here, and there's one over here, uh, sorry, over here, and there's one here. And then there's two more if you have more players, for three players and four players, respectively. These are going to be bonus tiles that you can get by reaching them with your feet. So when you move around, if you get to these spots and place a foot on that spot, you can get these bonus tokens. This one here requires you to put out a point token. And when you get there, you're going to get the highest point token from this region. There may be more. Uh, but if you collect this, you're going to get three points, and you're going to put this in your area, and that will score during the scoring rounds. This one here will give you one column and one foot, because you start with a certain amount, and you may have to buy more. Uh, and this one here is going to give you an extra movement anytime you take the movement action. So, after you've set up the board, uh, you're also going to put out a number of gods equal to one more than the number of players. And these are going to be gods that you can get by influencing them using cards that you'll have in your hand. Each player will have a hand of five cards. And they're going to look like this. Uh, we have a good example here. We have money cards, we have movement cards, and then we have the different types of sacrifice cards, which look like these. These gods can be taken as one of your actions on your turns, and I'll show you that shortly. Also, in addition, at the beginning of the game, each player is going to get one special bonus for their game. It's just going to be something that they get that's unique to them for the game, which will provide them some type of benefit. On a player's turn, they're going to do one of several things. You have choices, and your choices are going to be to move, buy, uh, acquire a god tile, or draw more cards. And as I said, you have a hand of cards that you start with. In order to move, you're going to need to play these feet cards. And if you choose move as your action, you're going to play feet cards, and each foot card is going to give you two movement. If you chose it, you're also going to get an additional movement by getting this large foot token. So if I were to play one card, I'd have three movement, and what that would allow me to do is move three feet from my play area out onto the board. And let's say I wanted to expand over here. Now, instead of placing that third foot, I could actually place one of my columns on this column spot, and that would go towards scoring later in the game. 
If I moved onto one of these tokens, let's say for example I placed three feet, I would get this thing, I would take it off the board, and I would take the corresponding token into my play area. The second thing you can do on your turn if you make that choice is you can buy things. And buying things is going to be a way to get more different resources or different things throughout the game. The first thing you can buy is extra pieces, like the columns and the feet, because you start with a set amount and once you use them they're going to be gone for a while. You pay one money per column or foot you want and add it to your supply. When you buy them, you may also pay to place them out on the board, so instead of taking a movement action, you can actually pay to put them out on the board. And it's going to be one gold for putting them out on the board, or two gold if you're putting it in a spot that is already occupied. The second thing you can buy with your money is going to be these sacrifice tiles. And these tiles are kind of like the cards that you'll have in your hand, except for that when you use them, they don't go away. So they're permanent for the entire game. They're going to allow you to better and more uh, easily acquire god tiles, which is going to be a different option on your turn. Money can also be used to upgrade your previously purchased sacrifice tiles to better ones by paying the difference between the level 1 and level 2 tiles, or the level 2 and level 3 tiles. But now we need to know what these tiles and or sacrifice cards do. And these cards are going to allow you to acquire gods. You'll see that there are gods on the table, and they all have special abilities, which we don't have time to go over. But, for example, in order to acquire this god, you're going to need to have four sacrifice of one type, three of another type, one of a third type, and one of a fourth type. So, I could use any combination of these cards from my hand with these tiles that I have in front of me that I've purchased previously in order to sacrifice these demands of four, three, one, and one different. When I do so, I'm going to take this god and put it in front of me, and he's going to provide me a benefit for the rest of the game, which is going to be three additional money any time that I decide to take a buy action. Additionally, each god that I get is going to give me points, and they're going to give me points equal to the current epoch that I'm in. So, in the first epoch, each god that I get gives me one point. The last thing you may do on your turn, uh, as your action choice, your one action choice per turn, is to draw three cards. Uh, you're simply going to take a card from the face-up stack, add it to your hand, and replenish. Now, you get to take three cards, and you may take them either from these cards or the face-down cards, and add them to your hand. After you've taken your turn, it's going to pass to the next player, who will then take their turn. And they'll choose one of those four different things that I just said. Uh, and turns are going to go on in this manner until one of two things happens. Either all three of these gods are taken from this, this spot here, or all of the bonus tiles on the board have been picked up by moving feet on top of them. At the end of an age, you're going to move on and you're going to take off all of the feet that you'd previously played. So let's say, for example, Yellow had played these feet here and these feet here or something. You know, they have pieces out on the board. Let's just say it's like this. They would take all of their feet off, but all of their columns would stay. And you'd move on to the next epoch, flipping a new card for a new civilization, placing the temple out onto that spot, so this time we're over here in Egypt, and you would place the Egypt marker onto the board, continuing on as we've done previously, taking actions, putting out more gods, and scoring more points. You're going to go on this way until you get to the end of Epoch 3, at which point you're going to score points. And point scoring is based on two different things. First, for each of these little point tiles that you manage to collect, you're going to get points at ends of turns 3 and 6. Second, you're going to get points for getting your columns out onto the board. So, for example, if you have one to three columns out on the board, you're going to get one point per column. If you have four to seven, you'll get two points per column. And if you have eight to eleven, you'll get three, and all twelve will get you four points per column. So the ways to score points are to get your columns out onto the board, to acquire these tokens, and to get gods scoring points when you, pur or when you purchase them from the board. Finally, the player who ends each turn is going to get three bonus points, and that is all of the ways to get points. Whoever has the most points at the end of the game is going to be the winner. So that's Pantheon, a real kind of simple uh, expansion game where you're trying to get your columns out onto the board in order to score points, you're trying to get gods in order to score points, and you're just trying to collect those bonus tokens. Now, I had to go over it really fast. There's a ton of different gods. Some give you money, some give you more bonus points, some reward you for having more sacrifice tiles. Uh, there's a lot of different things you can do. Some even give you additional turns. Uh, so it's kind of an interesting and fresh type of game. Uh, it's not my favorite game, but it's definitely got a kind of unique feel to it. Um, you can try and block other players by placing your feet and columns on spots, 
which makes it more expensive for them. It costs two movement to place somewhere where somebody else is. And if there's already two people there, you simply can't place there. Uh, so there is some type of blocking element to the game. Uh, and it's very interesting. So this is a game that I can definitely suggest to players uh, who are looking for a unique type of area control feel with a little bit of indirect player interaction. Uh, but not something that I think is going to be my favorite game and not something that I think is going to be staying in my collection for a very long time. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Sommer, and you've been watching what? The Dice Tower.